Thank you so much again for joining the newscast, John. It's great to be back. South Carolina's Republican primary was this past weekend. Trump did win, but pundits and politicos are talking about the 40% of voters who did reject Trump in favor of Nikki Haley. Is this significant? And should the Trump campaign be worried when it comes to the general election? Well, I think it continues to show uh, popularity for uh, former Secretary Haley, former Governor Haley in her home state. And um, uh, the outcome probably reflects more of sort of this just home com hometown uh, comfort with her uh, as a candidate and uh, rather than any, um, you know, any distaste for President Trump in South Carolina. Uh, he, he's hugely popular there. Um, but uh, so I, I think it's a positive for her, though, in the sense that it shows sort of maybe continued popularity for her as she uh, possibly moves on from this campaign and, and, and looks to future years and to remain as a candidate for the party. Um, but uh, certainly continues to show, you know, very strong support for President Trump, um, you know, coming out of this 60 percent, um, still very strong. There's no other candidates in the race now. So it's really a two person race and and probably shows, um, you know, some strength for Governor Haley in that uh, folks who might be a little disaffected with uh, former President Trump or those who are looking for an alternative candidate, maybe, um, you know, turning out for her. She certainly appealed to a broad swath of her home folks. And considering how healthy Haley's campaign fundraising has been, according to the recent FEC filings, do you think that her campaign will make it to Super Tuesday? She has stated that she will go forth to Super Tuesday, but candidates tend to change their mind. What What is your perspective? Well, she has made that commitment. And, um, you know, at this point, uh, I'm not sure that there's anything uh, long-term damaging to her prospects uh, if uh, she continues to go through to Super Tuesday. Um, I do think that uh, in some regards, it's often better for uh, even a front runner candidate like Mr. Trump to have somebody so that your campaign remains focused on message, focused on trying to appeal to the widest number of voters in your party. And so uh, sometimes that attention strays a little bit when you've got it all wrapped up really early. Um, so I think that that is, uh, you know, in, in some regards, that's a that's a good aspect of her staying in, uh, even for the Trump campaign. Um and my understanding is that one of her big financial backers, which is one of the interest groups uh, funded by the Koch brothers, has indicated that they will probably not be funding uh, you know, support for her campaign, et cetera, moving forward. Um, but she does still have a very robust uh, you know, campaign fundraising uh, for, uh, for herself, and I would imagine probably has enough to carry her through to Super Tuesday. And John, can you talk a little bit about the importance of campaign finances and having, you know, healthy fundraising for campaigns and the difference that it makes for candidates? Certainly. Um, so one of the things that you look for in the fundraising, you know, a lot of candidates can show um, healthy dollar numbers, et cetera, but you you, you want to take a look behind that sort of first picture and see what is it what is it showing and so um, and, and again another positive for for uh, for Governor Haley is is that she has a lot of individual donations those are things you look for because that's an indication of people who uh, voters who are actually putting their money you know behind you as opposed to a pack or or some kind of interest group right so um, so that remains a positive for her again and. Um, you know, that may be an indication that she still has a bright future in the party um, after Mr. Trump uh, either wins or doesn't win. Um, and uh, but, you know, there will be um, she's she's still uh, in, in sort of the prime of her political life, her career. And uh, so there certainly would be it seems like a good opportunity. Um, and so when you think also about that, if you're a candidate in her spot and it's looking pretty, pretty dim that you're going to uh, reach ultimate success, um, uh for the nomination, but that does show also a future. Um, so you have uh, shown an ability to attract not just again not just groups and and packs, but you have a, you're able to turn out individual voters to support your candidacy. Um, and uh, the other thing is that um, those people kind of remain in a bank for you. And so when four years, eight years from now, whenever you launch again, 
that's an immediate source of financing of campaign financing that you turn to and it shows again assuming that they will turn out for you again they remain interested in you that shows both the ability to raise money but the ability to excite interest in voters and so um, again i think you know the longer she stays in and she shows this sort of strength um, with with individual voters is, is uh, in many ways good for her long term. And Trump's campaign is burning through money, you know, funding his legal fees. And how does this impact Trump's campaign? And also, how do his legal struggles impact his ability to campaign in general? Uh, if Governor Haley is no longer in it, but, you know, that there will be plenty of money to finance uh, his campaign, um, both both sort of from his campaign directly, but also from uh, the Republican Party, the RNC, um, you know, they they will have plenty of money to fund that. I, I don't think that's really a concern um, long term for the for the uh, campaign. Um, the the other issue is, you know, <laughs> the, the legal woes, as people call them, is so interesting because in many ways uh, it's actually been a benefit to him, um, you know, at a time when President Biden is, is under a lot of criticism uh, on fronts. Um, you know, it's been a way for President Trump to stay in the spotlight, he kept his name out there, reminding people who he is. And, you know, there's a there's a strong core of, of folks who really feel like th these things are targeted at him uh, from a political basis. And uh, so that sort of strengthens their resolve uh, to continue to support and try to push his campaign forward. So um, in many ways, if the intent of these attacks, the, these legal attacks were to try to sink his candidacy, I think they backfired in many ways. They made his candidacy stronger in many ways. It's certainly funded additional fundraising as well for him. Every time, every time there's a big announcement out of one of these courts, uh, you know, he, there's several million dollars that pour into his campaign coffers. So, well, John, that's all the time that we have. Thank you again so much for joining the newscast and sharing your knowledge with us. Always fun. Talk anytime. Thank you.